Okay. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right, beloved, it's six thirty. Huh? You want the mic for us? Sure. <laughs> oh my, what's going on here? That's the new headset. Okay, I'm going to log off here. All right, beloved, it's 630. If you haven't signed in yet, because we just put the paper out, please sign in. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a couple of things. Um, Daryl announced it on Sunday morning. If you would, please, and if you need to go to the bathroom or the kids' room, whatever, please go all the way around, all the way this way. Um, <laughs> second thing is I know we have open cans of soda, but please... Not to drink them out here, but to put them on the table so we don't have spillage out here. And I won't say anything to our elders who are doing just that. <coughs> it's something brand new. It's okay, beloveds. Huh? Well, that's fine. You can eat there. Just leave your drinks. <laughs> However that works, you know. <laughs> Yes, and, and I do see some of the drinks back there, which is fine. That's all good. Um, yes. Yes, you have a top on as long as it closes. That's great. We've seen tops on there that don't close. Huh? Absolutely. You know, it's great, though. Don't worry about it. This part's going to be edited out, so it's all good. Nobody will, nobody will know. It's recording, but I think this is all going to be edited out, so it'll be just fine. And um, if anybody happens to know where the two um, <laughs> the two uh, buckets that we put out there for cigarettes, where those went off to, that would be great if they found their way back. I don't know any, why anybody would want those, but if you could bring them back, that would be awesome. <laughs> I don't know why, but they're not here anymore. <laughs> all right, beloveds, are you all ready to get started? Amen. 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 Woohoo! She said, go! Go, 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 go. Okay, so there are two things that we always do when I'm recovered. Amen. And the first one is Lord's Prayer. Lord's Prayer. Amen. So why don't we all just stand up and we'll go ahead and say the Lord's Prayer. Who would like to lead us this evening in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Amen. Praise God. Thank you all. Woohoo. Okay, so tonight, it really is tonight. Tonight, we are going to be in step four ministry. Hold on, we're getting to that, beloved. But thank you. We're getting to that. <laughs> step four ministry. Now, if uh, last week, because of the weather, we didn't come here, but there is one recorded. So if you didn't see that one, you can go online and watch it. We did a, a short review, and then we got into ministry. So, um, hello. hello. <laughs> My name is Trish Karangan, and I am recovered through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Hello. Okay, um, I'm going to ask 
two strong men to come up here and do something for me. So if I could get two strong men to come up here, that would be fantastic. <sighs> okay, we just have one. Oh, here we go. Yeah, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. If you guys don't mind, just to pick this up and move it that way. Yay! Now see, you all see my little cheat block. <laughs> so I can see over the thing. Um, all right, so tonight, what Holy Spirit showed me is going to be a little different. We're just going to talk. Can we do that? Can we just talk? There is so much that Holy Spirit has, has shown us and taught. And um, sometimes there's just so much that some of the details get overlooked. And if you can't see me, I'll stand up. But is, are we all right? Are we all good? Okay, so we started at the beginning talking about our identity. And we talked about Moses on the mountaintop. Okay, does everybody in here know who Moses is? Okay, well, Moses was told by God to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Okay, <clears throat> and it was his relationship with God that he was able to do just that. And as he did that, it was Father and Son and Holy Spirit were with him, were with them all out into the desert. And the promise was, is that he was going to lead his people who had been in slavery. He set them free. It was going to lead them into the promised land. Okay. Now, this journey was supposed to be very short. Right. Brother says 11 days. Some people say two weeks. Some people say, but short, not 40 years, which is what it ended up being. Okay. The reason it ended up being 40 years is because the people that were going needed to they needed to get some stuff out. They were crunchy. They complained, right? They did not trust in God. So it took a lot longer to get where they were going. Amen? Okay. Then later on, it shows that Father God says, great, my people are saved. Amen? They're out of Egypt. And now it's finally time that I get to have a relationship with my people once again since Adam and Eve were in the garden. Okay, so he invited all the people up on top of the mountain to meet him, all his people to meet him. And Moses was supposed to bring them all up. But all his people said, we're afraid. We don't want father. Moses, you just go. Tell us what he says. And then we'll listen to you. Okay, now, beloveds. <laughs> we. We can all say, like, why did they do that? Why didn't they go up there? Why didn't they talk to Father? But as Christians, that's where most of us live our lives. Okay? There's a pastor who stands up here. Everybody comes in. The pastor goes and talks to God. God gives him the word. He delivers the word. Then you go home. That's how most of us lived our Christian life. And that's how most Christians still live their Christian life. Okay? The difference is, is the relationship with Father. Okay? That's the difference, relationship with Father. Because they didn't want to go on top of the mountain, they got rules. Okay? And all rules produced was death. Amen? Not life, but death. Okay? Now we have the Bible. Okay? Now we have the Bible. They had the Ten Commandments. That's really had 613, but now we have the Bible, okay? Lots of Christians think that this is the relationship. I will read this, I will go to church, and I'm a Christian. Those things are great. Don't stop doing that. But that's not a relationship with Father God, okay? That's not a relationship with Father God. So if we all know that, then how do we have a relationship with God Almighty, someone that you can't see? How do we do that? <laughs> okay. When we receive Lord Jesus Christ, we got Holy Spirit, right? Okay. We pray, and the Word of God says pray unceasingly. All kinds of prayers, right? Right? Okay. So, <clears throat> Jackie. I'm going to borrow you for a second. Come up here, my lovely assistant. Stand right up here. Can we have a round of applause for my lovely assistant? Thank you very much. 
Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate prayer as a relationship with Father God, because some people said prayer, okay? Oh, dear Jackie, please come and visit to me today. I surely want to hear your voice today. Please bless my mom, my dad, my sister, my cat, my dog, and bless me all day long. Thank you. That's a prayer relationship with God. Don't stop praying. He asks us to pray, but that's a prayer relationship with God. Okay. Hi, Jackie. How was your day today? Hello, beloved of God. <laughs> what did you do all day today? Oh, I'm just watching everybody praying, and bringing my angels out. Oh, praise God. And Father, what would you like for me to do for you today? I want you to be still. Be still. Yes. Praise God. Go in your little closet. Yes. And it's just going to be me and you. Ah, oh, thank you, Father. No I distractions. Can't wait. Just Amen. me and you. Pour out your heart. Thank you. I want to hear your heart. Amen. And I can't wait, Father. Amen. Amen. See the difference? <clears throat> Amen. Do you see the difference? Does everybody? Yes. No. Maybe. Raise your hand if you see the difference. Thank you so much, Jackie. <laughs> All right. Everybody except Jackie. Please give her a round of applause. God. Okay, so we start all the way from back there because if we don't get the basics, you can't get what's coming next. Okay, you have to have that relationship with Father. Amen. When we receive Lord Jesus Christ, amen, Holy Spirit was deposited in us. Amen. Everybody got that? Holy Spirit was deposited in us. He's the one that allows us to talk to Father, to spend time with Father. Amen. Jesus Christ is no longer here on this earth. He is seated on his throne in heaven on the right hand of the Father. Amen. It's Holy Spirit who is here on this earth, and he lives in each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Okay, when Jesus walked the earth, what did he do? As Jesus walked the earth, what did he do? Nothing. <laughs> Huh? He did lots of things. Name one. Anything. Cast it out demons. Cast it out demons. Had a relationship with his disciples. He was a teacher. What else? Raised people from the dead. Amen. Told him what God wanted. He demonstrated. Prayed, prayed, prayed. Amen. Okay, so he showed his disciples, and this is the first time you'll ever hear this, is when he was on the earth, he demonstrated Father. It was no longer God way out there. It's Father. He's my Father. I'm the Messiah. I'm here, and I'm going to show you all exactly what to do. And he taught all his disciples to do exactly what he did. Are we all in agreement? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Then he tells his disciples... He anoints each and every one of them, and he sends them out two by two. And when I say anoint, what he does is he places Holy Spirit upon them, and they go out two by two. Amen? To go and do exactly what he showed them to do. Amen? Okay. <clears throat> now we, because Lord Jesus Christ has already come, he's already gone to the cross, he's already risen, we don't have Holy Spirit on us. We have Holy Spirit in us. In us. Amen? So like Pastor always says, whenever we get on the scene, wherever we go, we are the Jesus. We have Jesus in us. We have Holy Spirit within us. Amen? Okay. And so, just like Jesus told his disciples, we are to go. go. Amen? In the, in the Great Commission... He told us, he told each and every one of us, every man, woman, and child, it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, to go. Amen? Go. Right? Go and tell them. Go and show them. Everything that I've done for you, you go and tell them about me. You go them and tell them about Father. Amen? And then you take them by the hand and you show them the Father. Amen? See, that's the difference. Take them by the hand and show them the Father. Hallelujah. And then bring them into a worship center, Holy Spirit filled, and let's grow them up. Amen? So that now, amen, so that now 
they can go, right? So then that, and it just keeps going and it just keeps going. That's what we're called to do. And Jesus gave us his two commandments, amen, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, amen. And then number two, love your neighbor as yourself, amen. And in John, it even gets gooder. Love your neighbor as I, Jesus, have loved you, amen. No excuses now because he's like, everything that Lord Jesus Christ did, he says, now love them like I've loved you. Amen? Okay, so when we talk about ministry, when we talk about ministry, that doesn't mean that you have to go set up a 501c3. That does not mean you have to go online and go to the website and see if there's a name that you can use. It has nothing to do with that. If God tells you to start a ministry, and that's what it is, but that's not what we're talking about here. Ministry is what God called us to do in the Great Commission, to go and tell everybody. So, amen. So, whatever your ministry field is, is this. Where do you work? That's your ministry field. Where do you shop? That's your ministry field. Where do you get gas? Everything you do in a week's time, the same places that you go, that's your ministry field. All the people that you see, that is your ministry field. Amen? And we are supposed to go and tell those people about Jesus. And not just tell them, but we are to be like Jesus. We are to shine like Holy Spirit. Amen? We are to, to demonstrate love, peace, joy. Amen? Forgiveness. Amen? We're to demonstrate those things, and all of us are called to do that. Amen? Do we all agree? Okay. So that's the review. So this is what Holy Spirit was, was showing us and, and talking to us about, it, and this is it. Is that, um, has anybody read Revelation? Anybody read Revelation? Okay. Yes, it's kind of hard to read. It's, it's a, but there, there's a promise with reading Revelation. Okay, if anybody wants to be a prophet, open up the book of Revelation and just speak it aloud. You're prophesying what is going to take place. Amen? It's just if you were a prophet and God spoke to you and said, go say this. This is what he's saying. Just read it in the book and speak it aloud. Aloud. Amen? Affirm what's in that, what's in that book. Because <clears throat> these are the things that are going to take place. Amen? So what you may or may not understand is a lot of those things that you have read or will read will take place before that trumpet goes off. We are not immune to the things that are going to take place. See, beloveds, I think that we are too complacent. I think that when we, <clears throat> when we talk about what happened to Lord Jesus Christ, when he was being beat, <clears throat> and when he was being put on that cross, we just kind of there's a veil over that. We don't really understand what took place. If we did, we'd, we'd really think about before we spoke words we shouldn't speak or before we did something we know we're not supposed to do. Amen. Right? Because if it happened to somebody you're very close with, it would torment you almost. Like, how could this have happened? What could this, right? Because we all have things that we had to let go and forgive people for that they did to us. Can we all agree on that? Was it anything like what happened to Lord Jesus? No. no. But when it comes to him, we kind of think, oh, well, he, he's Jesus. Maybe it wasn't. It was. It was horrifying. But he did it because I sinned. He did it because you sinned, and you sinned, and you sinned, and you sinned. The whole entire world, whoever existed, sinned. That's why he did it. It's like the two that were crucified with him. One of them was delivering, the other one looked at him and said, Shut up, this man has done no wrong. Amen, beloved. This man has done no wrong. Amen. Amen. But he did that for us. And we talked about um, having goals, right? Making a New Year's resolution. We don't make those. We make eternal resolutions that there is a goal he had a goal 
and that is to reconcile every man, woman, and child back to the Father. Amen. And there's Amen. And there's all these things that he had to go through and had to accomplish to be able to do that for us, to do that for Father. Otherwise, we wouldn't be going. Otherwise, we wouldn't be going. If Satan had won, and Jesus, when he was tempted out in the desert, had just said, okay, there'd be no revelations. Satan would have won. There would be no heaven, new heaven and new earth. There would be no us, and there would be no heaven for us. He had to accomplish all those things and be absolutely sinless and perfect for us so that we could have our Father. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 But when he left, he said, Beloved, you will do far greater things. And why is that? Because there's no longer one man here on the earth filled with Holy Spirit with, with that purpose and that plan to reconcile everybody back to the Father. The Great Commission gives every single person who receives the Lord Jesus Christ that same mission. Go. Amen. Go. Amen. Amen. That's why all together... We're all individual Jesus. We're all individuals going, making disciples, doing what he did. Amen. Amen. That's why we do far greater things. So, there's only one purpose that we have on the face of this earth. Do you all know what that one purpose is? If you ever asked when you were little, like, why are we here? Why are we born? Why do we have to be here on earth? I did. I found out. We have a purpose. One, God gives us a chance to choose. See, the Word of God says that He knew us way before we were ever born, that we were hidden inside Lord Jesus Christ. But He wants us to choose Him, not to be made to worship Him. Choose Him. So we have this whole beautiful earth and all of its creatures and all of its flowers and all its wonderfulness that He created. And He said, here you go, my children. I give you a choice. You can choose to serve yourself or you can choose to have me. That is our sole purpose. Sole purpose. Right? So then we talked about, did we truly die? Did we truly die in Christ that day that we received Lord Jesus Christ? Did we say, you know what? I receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I don't want to go to hell, but I'm going to keep living the way I'm living. I was going to keep doing my thing. Or did we die and say, okay, I don't want all that. What you have is far greater. Amen? Amen. Okay, so here is <laughs> here's what Holy Spirit is trying to tell us. Listen, beloved, our job, our job is to go out into our ministry field, amen, and do exactly what was done for us. Amen? To take people by the hand, reach into hell, and grab people out of hell before that trumpet goes off. That's our job. That's our job. Listen, there is a veil over this world, and we get caught up in the daily routine of life. That we sometimes, if we hear something special from God, or we see somebody, that we'll go talk to that person. It's not our job. Our job is to go into our ministry field, whatever that is for you, and go after those people. Amen. 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 Listen, Father never stops coming after us. Amen? Amen. He never stops coming after us. Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. And Pastor said this one Sunday, and I pray that you all caught this, that we know everything. Do you all remember that? Sonia, you know everything. Despite what Jim says, you know everything. <laughs> you know everything. Why? Because Holy Spirit knows everything and He lives in us. Amen. Amen. He lives in us. Amen. And the Bible is amazing because it tells us all these stories about our brothers and sisters and encourages us that they did all these things. They trusted in God. They heard from God. And they didn't even have Jesus yet. They didn't even have Holy Spirit yet. I find that absolutely amazing. Because without Jesus, I was a complete mess. Complete mess. And all agree to that? 
But these guys, I mean, okay, look at Moses, right? Mm, he had to go tell the Pharaoh, listen, you need to let all these people go that you've had in slavery for all these hundreds of years. You need to go ahead and let them go or some bad things are going to happen to you. <laughs> Could you imagine going up to the president and saying, listen, um, God told me to tell you that you need to not tax everybody and we need to get away with all this inflation or some bad things are going to happen. <laughs> Do you know how fast you'd be in Getmo? I mean, you'd be like tased right there, even if you even got to go see him, you know, and they would be waterboarding you when you woke up from being tased. I mean, that's how fast, right? But he's got to go talk to the Pharaoh, the king, the president, and go tell him, listen, I just saw this burning bush, and it said, you need to let these people go. They would have thought he was nuts. And today, if we were to do the same, same thing, they would tell us we're nuts. But this is what happened. This is what happened. And this brother, this is what he did. And hear me now. No Holy Spirit in him. No Jesus yet. And this is what he did. And he had a relationship with our Father. And he showed us how to have a relationship with our Father. Amen. Amen. And brothers, then we, had, and then we have Noah. Come on, listen to this brother. God tells him one time, go build a boat. He's like, um, there's nothing but sand out here. It's a desert. Right. And God says, it's going to rain, and you're going to have to get inside this boat. He said, there's no such thing as rain. We've never seen rain. Water came up from the ground in wells. That's why they built wells, so they can capture all the water. There was never rain. There was never rain. They thought he was nuts. But listen, he was the only man, and I want you to hear this. He was the only man on the face of this earth that worshipped God. That worshipped God. I mean, think about this. On the whole entire earth, one man. If not Noah, we would not be here today. Amen. None of us. Because he had a relationship with God. Amen? And he built this big, huge boat, put all these beautiful animals on it. <laughs> and I used to wish, you know, oh, I wish I could have lived back then. I remember as a kid, I had a Bible. It was a King James. Couldn't read it. But as a kid, I had this Bible and it had the whole, you know, ark theme and everything on it and I loved it because it had all the animals I thought oh that'd be really cool I love to save all the animals didn't really get it at the time but beloved this is who we are except our ark our ark has no limit <gasps> has no limit to size amen and our job again is to reach down see Noah wasn't allowed to reach down in that water and pull people out God made sure of it. He slammed that door shut and they couldn't get out and nobody else could get in. Could you imagine the screams? Could you imagine what that family heard? Could you even imagine? These are people that they loved. Listen, he was out there day after day telling people, come on, you got to get this. You got to understand this. This is what's coming. You got to change your ways. You got to... You gotta receive Lord Jesus. You can't do this. You gotta, you gotta worship God. You gotta repent. Amen? Amen. But not a single person did. It was dark. It was very dark. Amen. It was very dark. Amen? Amen? But see, we, say that with me, we, we, we get to, and we have all the power and authority and ability to, to reach down to that water and pull them up on that boat. Do you understand? Jesus gives us that power and authority. And beloved, time is short. Listen, we wake up every day and we do pretty much the same thing day after day and day after day. Amen? The sun goes up, the sun goes down, the sun goes up, the sun goes down. We eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whatever it is, we go to work, come home, we take a shower. We do pretty much the same thing every day. That is the deception of this world, to stay into that. Amen? Our sole job is to go out there and get souls. 
before that horn goes off, right? Peter said, I, I got to finish the race. It is a race. It is a race before that, that horn goes off. Amen? And you all have to understand what the Word of God tells us, to put on all of our armor, amen, and to dig your feet in and stand, because it's going to get ugly. It's going to get bad. You think the world right now is dark and depraved? You have no idea what's coming. Listen, start to read Revelation, please, for God. Saints, go read it. Be blessed and read it aloud. Because these things will take place, God says. One day, you're just going to walk out your door and it's not going to be snow and sleet the way that we saw or cold weather. It's going to be utter chaos. I mean, just, just everybody, most people have cell phones. Everybody on your contact list saved? And not just saved. Does everybody on your contact list have a relationship with Father God? Let's make sure everybody in here has a relationship with Father God. Okay? Amen. All right. This is, this, is really, this is really difficult and don't know if you're going to get it or not. Here I am. Here I am, Father. Here I am. That's all it takes. Just get wherever you can be alone. Here I am. Do you remember what, what God said to Adam and Eve? Where are you? Where are you? Don't you think he can see them? Where are you? All they had to do was say, here I am. Here I am. I messed up. Help me. Here I am. That's all we have to do. And our Father, He comes rushing in. And you will know love like you've never known before. No longer. Know. Okay, so what happens then is He fills us up with Holy Spirit. And He overflows us in Holy Spirit so we can go do the things that we're supposed to do. Amen? Now listen, reading your Bible is amazing. Praying is amazing. Coming to church. And listen, when you're here at a Holy Spirit church, yes, you will feel Holy Spirit. Yes, yes and all those dead things will just fall off. Hallelujah. Amen. And you might even get filled before you leave. Hallelujah. Amen. But the reason you're getting filled is because others are overflowing in Holy Spirit. Amen. We like to call those, forgive this term, spiritual suckers. You come in because you don't want to do the work. And you're just like, oh, they're so anointed. I just want to stay right here with you because you are so gifted and so anointed. And I always feel great when I'm with you. And I feel so much peace. <sighs> and then they go off and they live their life. And Sunday, here they go, right back. Oh, you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I always feel so great when you're here. I just love it when you're here. Right? Oh, I just love this church. It's so great. But you yourself have to have a relationship with Father God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Again, we can't go and do what we need to do if we don't have that relationship. All the way from the beginning, Moses had a relationship with God, but none of the Israelites and they wandered around aimlessly for 40 years. God has a promised land for all of us. And Father has paid dearly. He bankrupted heaven so that He could have us and we could have Him. He bankrupted heaven so that all the junk that we've ever done and has ever been done to us, that we don't have to pray, pay that price. Amen. Because let me tell you about hell. There's no partying in hell. <laughs> There's no drinking in hell. There's no drugs in hell to get high on. And Holy Spirit just showed me this not long ago. How miserable during COVID was it when we couldn't get out and talk to people? We couldn't be around people. Isolated and alone. But you hear all the screams. Isolated and alone. Loneliness is, is torture enough. 
Amen? But every sin of the world, every sickness and disease that has ever been, will be on that person in hell for eternity with no end, no way out, and no hope. And this is an added bonus. You can see heaven. They can't see you, don't even know you exist. But for eternity, that's what you live in. No way out. We have a job. Beloved, you're just in our own community. Go to Kroger, go to Walmart. Look, you know Walmart's dark. You know it is. The places that you work, these factories, dark. You know it is. But even your very worst enemy, if you have one still, you would never wish that on them. Amen. And beloveds, even if you're not speaking to your, your family, is it worth it? Come on now, is it worth it? To not forgive them, not to talk to them? Listen. Listen. Of all the people in the world that Noah probably wanted on the, that boat is all of his relatives, all of his friends. God says, Jesus says, if you deny me, you deny my father. If you're embarrassed, too ashamed to talk to people, guess what? When you get here, I'm going to be embarrassed in front of my father for you. <laughs> Beloved, I don't... Holy Spirit, Father loves us. He loves us. And He wants us to know we have no excuses. Amen. We have no excuses. We can't say, well, they didn't tell us, or this person didn't say anything. Read the Bible for yourself. Talk to God to, for yourself. If you would talk to Father, you would know. So who was to blame on that? That's you. Because all you have to do is say, here I am. Amen. But He wants you to know, listen, beloveds, I love you. Take this veil off your everyday life. Listen, don't listen to the enemy. you got one job to do. And listen, all hell is about to break loose. For real, all hell is about to break loose. When we go, when that trumpet goes off, there's no God on this earth. Holy Spirit, all His Holy Spirit children leave. And you, you don't know the depths of depravity that are already here with God. Do you understand, beloved? Amen. 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 And if, oh, you have no idea, even the things that we've been through. Things that took us years to get over. Amen. Things that, praise God, that's why we came to Iron Recovery. <laughs> Beloved, like you said, it's not even, it's not even, I mean, think about Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen, that's just Miami Beach. I mean, the way it is every single day, you know, that's nothing. <laughs> I live there. I believe it, it really is. It, it's just the way it is. But we, beloveds, we have a job to do. We truly do. You know, I'm going to tattle on, on us, Pastor. So, um, one of these TVs, I don't even know which one it is anymore. But um, we, we brought our, our TV from here, or to here. So we didn't, we didn't have a TV in our house. So my parents asked, what do you want? And I said, well, you can donate to the Joe and Trish TV fund. Because we're saving up for a new TV. <laughs> so God bless them. They blessed us. And so we went out and got a TV. Well, we got one bigger than we thought it was. And cheaper than we even got this one. And we always get it on, you know, during Christmas. Because they have all those. Yeah, right. Okay. So <laughs> it took us three days to get this TV and to get it mounted. And after it was mounted, and we were feeling pretty good about ourselves, because it takes up, like, the whole wall. And, uh, <laughs> right? That's funny, right? Okay, so then Holy Spirit said, I guess you're planning on staying for a while. Exactly. He said, so, this is your home. Oh, I'm sorry.
So we make this our home. This is not our home. This is not our home. I know. I know. This is not our home. Amen? It's not. We are temporary here so that we can go there for eternity. Amen? Absolutely, a vapor of life. And so we talked about putting a, a, a plan in place to go with our goal. But what's our goal? And I, I pray that we kind of took some time and we went over this and, you know, kind of helped each other out to make that plan, to make that goal. What was our eternal goal going to be? And we spoke out that for God's hand ministries, our eternal goal is to continue the work of Lord Jesus Christ. To reconcile every man, woman, and child back to our Father. Amen? That's it. And how we're going to do it? We're going to go. We're going to show the love of God. We're going to bring them back and grow them up. And then we're going to go. We're going to show the love of God. We're going to bring them back, grow them up, and go back out, and go back out, and go back out. Amen? As a ministry, that is what we're doing. But what are we Amen. doing? Amen. But what are we doing as individuals? Amen. Discipleship. It's the same thing what Lord Jesus Christ did. He took those who you would not think that God would use. Amen. <laughs> Say, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Amen. And says, guess what? I'm going to use you to save all kinds of people. I'm going to use you to reach into the pit of hell yes. and bring them out. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. That's all Holy Spirit has for us tonight. Forgive me, beloved. I didn't go over by 12 minutes. But we are still going to break into our group. If there's anything that you need to confess tonight, if there's anything that you need to talk about tonight, this is what we're going to talk about. There isn't a specific topic. I think it's, well, it's just a lot what Holy Spirit laid on us. Amen. So let's go fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Love you all.